So think about any successful tech product with billions of users. They either started with some groundbreaking technology, or they completely changed how an entire industry works, or they created an entire industry from scratch. Welcome to Facebook. And then there's WhatsApp. It's a chat app. Its most wild features are vo voice notes. Oh, oh, uh, uh, if you send an emoji on its own, it's bigger. See? So how did the most basic chat app imaginable manage to get 2 billion users, get acquired for almost $20 billion with just 55 employees? That's $350 million per employee. So I looked under the curtain and now it all makes sense because they built WhatsApp with a very counterintuitive but genius design approach. And even when Zuckerberg got his hands on it, he realized that while he could do all kinds of wild things with everything else, WhatsApp is a different beast. I'm Enrico, I'm a product manager working in tech, and on this channel I go behind the scenes of design, psychology and stories behind the technology we all use. And to understand why this boring app that should have failed is now used by 25% of all humanity, we have to start here in 2009. Brian Acton and Jan Coom were two ex-Yahoo employees, and they got started by creating an app that allowed people to share a status, but they quickly realized that wasn't a great idea. So they quickly pivoted to an instant messaging app. But funnily enough, statuses are a feature of WhatsApp all the way to today. Now, let me make something very clear. A chat app is probably one of the simplest kind of applications you can build. Chatting on the internet is something that goes back to things like IRC in 1988. And remember, now we are at the peak of the explosion of the smartphone. Everyone and their dog is out there building apps. And everyone is also running to bring chat apps to the smartphone. Giants like MSN and Skype and Facebook all had chat apps and new competitors were coming out every single week with the latest messaging app. So how the hell did this random app manage to complete in the bloodbath that was the app store at the time? Win against established products with a team of less than 50 people and get all the way to 465 million users, oh, all without spending a single dollar on advertising. Well, first, the giants didn't really see the opportunity. Skype was still focusing on video calls, Apple was and still is building things for their nice wall garden ecosystem, Facebook was growing like crazy and they were worried about their social media side. And Google, well, they had so many chat apps that at this point, it's basically a meme. But WhatsApp made three crucial moves with their product that are the basis of its success. First is they chose to use your phone number as the main identifier for your account instead of your email. This sounds like a very small thing, but it's super important. Even back then, using your email was clearly the standard when it comes to signing up to any online service. And to this day, WhatsApp is still one of the few big tech products that still is based on your phone number for your account. It would have been easy for the founders to look at their environment in the California Silicon Valley tech bubble back then, where everybody was using the internet and everybody had a computer in their homes for almost a decade. But instead, they were thinking, globally. At the time, the smartphone and mobile networks were a new thing for most of the world. For billions of people in massive countries like India, the smartphone was their first access to the internet, skipping computers altogether. They weren't necessarily familiar with email addresses, but they all had a phone number. And this made adoption so much easier. In many countries, SMS was still very expensive. I remember I started using WhatsApp back in 2011 in Italy and having the ability to have group chats and send as many messages as I wanted was wild. But the second genius thing they did is something counterintuitive, something that went against what everyone else was doing. And even today, 10 years later, Zuckerberg, who owns WhatsApp, is not even remotely trying change this. So let's imagine you are the head of product at WhatsApp back in 2012. The app is growing like crazy and every competitor app is adding more and more features. Mini games, videos, calls, social network functionality. Everyone is in a constant race to do more and add and add and add another feature. Probably the best example of this is WeChat. WeChat and WhatsApp both started as chat applications, but WeChat evolved into this monster app with payments and food delivery. I remember when I went to China a few years back, I used WeChat to control the music in the karaoke room that we hired. But the people at WhatsApp just didn't care. They did the most difficult thing you can do in this case, which is focusing on the basics. They could have added so much, turn it into a social network or a payments juggernaut, but they instead focused on simplicity. When a first time user logs in, there is just one thing, 
messaging. And this makes the learning curve so much simpler, making users reach as fast as possible the aha moment. The moment where you get the value that the product can give you and you actually become what's called a sticky user. By keeping the app insanely limited in features, they allowed it to be very small in size as well and run properly on even very old devices. Again, since WhatsApp is popular in a lot of developing countries, using older or low power devices, this is critical and not something that companies usually even think about. WhatsApp has an app for basically every platform, iOS, Android, web, and back in the day, it had apps for even disease platforms like BlackBerry OS and Windows phones. Remember Windows phone? It was cool. So say that you now come to lead product for WhatsApp and you want to change things and add, say, mini games. It seems like a cool idea, right? Where well, you need to develop these mini games for the Android app that runs on Java, the iOS app, which runs on Swift, the web app runs on JavaScript, HTML, CSS, the Mac desktop app runs on Objective-C, the PC desktop app runs on C or C Sharp, and then you have to manage the rollout of this. You have 2 billion people, all on different platforms, all on different versions of the app, some with old phones for 2015, some with RTX 4090 Giga Chat computers. You see how quickly rolling out a single feature becomes a nightmare. And this is why it took forever to get basic things on WhatsApp like reactions or the ability to check your messages on a computer without having your phone connected to the internet. And this leads us to the third key of the success of WhatsApp, the foundations. So let me ask you a question. What do you do when you're not sure when internet is working? You know when you just connect to a Wi-Fi and you just want to check everything is working. You either do a random search on Google because Google is never slow or never goes down. Or if you are a WhatsApp user like me, you try to check your messages or send a message on WhatsApp. And this is because they managed from the start, even before they were acquired by Facebook, to have one of the most robust and scalable backends in tech. Every day, over 100 billion messages are sent on WhatsApp. That's 10 times the population of Earth. And we're not even counting media and images and calls. And right from the get-go in the early 2010s, when everyone was moving to the cloud using services like AWS, the WhatsApp team did things differently. Instead of jumping on the cloud bandwagon, they kept everything running on their own servers with a unique but incredibly powerful architecture running on Erlang. At the time they were acquired by Facebook, the WhatsApp team was just 50 people, but they were managing 465 million users, 8.5 million users per single employee, sending 50 billion messages a day. That means 30 billion messages per month. This was an incredible scale to reach for such a small team. And keeping things simple is exactly what made it possible. When Zuckerberg acquired WhatsApp in 2014 for $19 billion, this means that the company was valued at over $350 million for every employee they had at the time. Just wild. But whenever I talk to people from the US, I always get a puzzled face when I ask them to jump on WhatsApp. So why did WhatsApp never really took hold in the US? Well, everywhere else, SMS was still quite expensive, leading to free messaging on WhatsApp taking over much quicker. While in the US, SMS was still pretty cheap compared to other countries. And then there's the fact that in the US, the iPhone has a 57% market share, meaning many more people have started using iMessage. So a cross-platform alternative like WhatsApp never really developed. While on the global Global market iOS only has 25% market share, making iMessage a much less interesting option for the general public. Now, looking at the product strategy of WhatsApp really shows how much focusing on the basics, thinking globally, and building a strong foundation can bring immense results, even with a very small team. And if you like to go behind the scenes of other digital products, I dissected why Notion seems to be everywhere in this video right here. And on this other one, how Arc Browser is challenging the dominion of Google Chrome.